This episode contains sex jokes and discussions regarding sex. So if you're easily offended, please skip out on this one. Submit your questions and stories to ScreamQueerCast at gmail.com or by submitting them to Instagram at ScreamQueerPodcast and catch new episodes every Tuesday morning wherever podcasts are streamed. Remember to rate and subscribe. Welcome to the Scream Queer Podcast with Ralph Anthony. The following content contains topics describing graphic violence, strong sexual content, explicit language, and elements that may not be suitable for some audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Hi, beautiful. Thank you so much for listening into this episode. I hope you are doing wonderful. I hope you are thriving. And as always, I hope you are hanging in there. Today, I'm back with another Q&A episode. I really enjoyed recording the last one that I did in Vegas. And you all really came through with the questions last time. And I'm going to be completely honest. I had a whole episode about the topic of death written out and ready to go for this week. However, when I was recording it, I just, I wasn't feeling it. And that's never really happened before during a recording. Sometimes I'll just keep redoing it and redoing it and redoing it. But this one, I basically recorded the full episode and I was like, I'm not really feeling this. Like it just... It sounded just very robotic, and I was just reading from my bullet points and going off of that, but yeah, it was just very robotic, and what I was talking about, I don't feel the way I was delivering it. Like, it it wouldn't have had as big as an impact that I would have wanted it to have, so... I just went ahead and scrapped it, like I deleted it, so there's no way of retrieving that. And I was like, you know what? I have quite a bit of questions left over, as well as some new ones, so why not just do another Q&A episode? So, like I said, I wasn't going to be able to go through all of those questions last time, so I'm going to be doing some of those, as well as some new submissions. I wouldn't even call it like a QA and a because some of these aren't even questions, they're just submissions, and I love them. They're so good, some of these, so... Before we get started, please make sure to rate, review, and follow the podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And wherever you are, whatever time it is, make sure to grab your favorite beverage and let's get into these together. Remember to take a sip every time I mess up because that's inevitable here. First question or first submission, take a drink. What would you say are the trends or subgenres currently dominating the horror film industry? Uh, I feel right now we are in the return of the quote unquote devil film. I mean, we have the new Exorcist film that's coming out, The Nun 2 will be coming out soon, both of which I will be checking out. Uh, earlier this year, we saw the release of Evil Dead Rise. I believe The Pope's Exorcist with Russell Crowe. Is that what it was called? Um, but do you want to know what I want to see dominate the horror industry again? Slashers. I want to see slashers. I am a sucker for late 90s and early 2000s slashers. We just need a resurgence of that whole era again. It's like once Scream was released, then all of these copycat slasher films followed. And whether they were good or not, it was just it was just so fun. It was so fun. But going back to the the devil films, um, I've said this before, but in my opinion, most possession, demonic exorcism films are most times just poorly executed. I mean, you have the classics, 
but I just feel like the more modern releases are just not really that good. But yeah, thank you for that question. That was a good question. Next submission. Hi, Ralph. Love your show. I'm shocked you haven't covered the case of Miranda Cosgrove and her stalker. Apparently, a man who was stalking her had set himself on fire and then shot himself at her house. She wasn't home when it happened, but she talked about the experience on a podcast in 2020. There's a video clip of her talking about it, but when it went viral on TikTok, it had so many people coming for her because of how calmly she described the situation. Anyway, I went to my parents' house and then I got a call at like three in the morning that somebody had like died at my house. And it was the weirdest thing ever because they had like caution tape up and, you know, like it was right in my front yard. And basically, I guess a guy came and he was like burying things in my backyard for like three days. And um, he buried a lunchbox with like a milk chocolate inside of it in my backyard and then he buried like knives and like a rope and like a bunch of random stuff and I guess he'd been in my backyard like hanging out there and like burying things why I didn't notice I don't know (laughs) and I'm just like apparently not very observant and then um I found out later that like all that stuff was there and that he had been like pacing in my backyard with a gun he also looked like crazy like he was wearing like this long trench coat and he had like a like, Still dressed better than your date in the zebra <laughs> pants. Yeah, he was dressed he was pretty, nice, uh, pretty nicely. Um, but yeah, he was just like pacing in my backyard, I guess. And because uh, I have like security cameras. So later when we looked, I, we figured out he was back there for like like six hours or something like waiting. And then somebody drove up that had a similar car, like that kind of looked like my car. And I guess he got confused and he thought that maybe it was me driving up it's just like bad luck and he like shot at this person like six times and he missed because she was in a car she drove away and then he set himself on fire and he shot himself simultaneously and then later so I got a call at like three or four in the morning this happened probably at like one in the morning I got a call at like three or four in the morning saying like where are you like can you come like to your house because someone like killed themselves there and they were trying to just like put it all together and they still haven't really put like put it all together why it happened or like what the person was doing or if Mm -hmm. he it might have just been totally random like he saw me somewhere and he like followed me home and then or something like that but anyway they never figured out like exactly exactly why so um but yeah so it freaked me out really bad and i started staying like back at my parents house and then i got another house somewhere okay this is fucking insane But why is she talking about it so nonchalantly? I mean, I'm glad she's good, but girl, come on. It's giving very, like, I don't give a fuck. (laughs) Wait, is this from the same interview where she says, uh, where she's like, I actually do cuss a little. And she's like, yeah, what's your favorite cuss word? Probably fuck. (laughs) Where they laugh all crazy. Is it, I think this is the same like interview that that's from moving right along (laughs) next question (laughs) oh this definitely was a troll uh the question is porn hub or x videos girl girl um boyfriend tv and twitter next question would you ever date a transsexual person I don't think I would be opposed to it. Uh, Without fetishizing the community, I have seen some really beautiful people. I think I would lean more toward female to male transition. Uh, Okay, do you know who is so just beautiful? Laith Ashley. Absolutely beautiful. Before transition as well. Like, so gorgeous and from interviews and social media posts he just seems like such a nice person so Laith, if you're listening you're probably not i just want to talk that's great keep saying it just keep saying it keep saying it out loud and maybe you will convince hope because you won't be convincing anybody else so dream on next question what is your workout routine Believe it or not, as much as I talk about working out, I absolutely despise it. 
I mean, I still do it for my health, but I could care less about having a six pack anymore. I remember I used to always just do crunches and leg lifts and any ab workout that can give me some sort of a six pack or like a V shape, but it just, uh, it's too much work. And for what? Like working out for me, it used to be really fun, especially going from 300 pounds to 165 pounds to what I am now, which is a healthy 212 pounds or what I thought was healthy. Tell me why on my doctor's visit records, it shows my weight as being obese, like obese. Like I have body dysmorphia and I see that. So like, I feel like shit already. And then I see that and I'm just like, oh my God, I'm obese. Okay. Like, I'm a big bitch, I know, but I'm not obese. I'm 6'1", like, like what? Anyway, the routine goes as so. I cycle for about 30 minutes to an hour, depending if I'm, like, incorporating weightlifting. I do high impact, meaning there's always resistance, um, and that's pretty much it. I enjoy walks, too. I mean, you don't have to be a CrossFit daddy to be healthy, right? I mean, yeah, like I think as long as you stay active and just keep your body moving in one way or another, like I think you should be okay and just like make healthier choices when eating. And that's all there is to it. It's really not that hard. It's just for me, it's just been kind of a struggle to really push myself to like want to work out because I'm like, oh, this is so fucking boring. Okay, moving on. Podcast has been lacking paranormal and 911 calls lately. Are you asking why? Like, I don't I don't know. Is this like, like a statement? Are you just telling me? Um, sure. I mean, there's been a lack of that kind of content, but I'm saving some pretty good content for some collabs I have coming up. So don't worry. Again, horror, meaning horror films, real life horror, such as like heavier topics. I want to cover it all. Same for true crime. Like I, like I said, I, I don't want every episode to be exactly the same because I'll get bored. Um, but I mean, you can expect some 911 calls. I mean, they'll be back really soon, sooner than you think. Uh, I'm working on quite a bit here, but just stay with me. I promise it will be worth it in the end. Favorite word after sex. Either bring the towel or get off me. Okay, let's get off. So we have a submission here. I feel at times my boyfriend is too good looking for me. I'm not ugly, but I know he could do better. Have you ever had an experience like this? Oh no. I have with an ex. His personality was horrendous and mine outshined his. Uh, I'm, jo I'm joking. It's a joke. I think most definitely it's important that you remember that looks, attractiveness is pretty much based off of someone's preference, yeah? To me, uh, I, I think what matters most in a relationship, it should go way beyond like physical appearance. I know that does play a factor, but I don't think that it should be... 100% what it's about could looking like Laith Ashley be a plus I maybe maybe kidding I'm kidding again I I have to stop here okay look I tend to make stupid jokes when I'm sad or extremely nervous which I am right now with this type of question so I'm sorry but all I can say if you're feeling insecure about your relationship you should probably consider talking to your boyfriend about these feelings that you are experiencing i'm definitely a warrior for communication i think having honest and open communication can really help you understand one another better and coming from someone who has self-esteem issues i'd also say put in more effort to work toward building your self-esteem and self-confidence. Again, that comes from yourself first. One thing I'm trying to practice like really hard 
is feeling good about myself. Like I mentioned a little while ago about like just having body dysmorphia and just being told that I was obese at the doctor. Like I really like let that get to me. So I think feeling good about yourself is attractive in its own right. I sound like I'm a fucking advice columnist here, which I'm definitely not. But definitely trust your partner's choice just being with you. I mean, they're with you for a reason. But I, again, I get it. And it's important that you remember that, I mean, we all have different standards on what beauty is. Attractiveness is not just about, like, looks. Like, focus on qualities, focus on values, focus on the connection that you both share. I mean, if your insecurity persists, I would definitely recommend speaking maybe to a therapist or a counselor. Uh, Maybe they can help you work through these feelings and help you work toward a more positive image of yourself. But I believe a strong and healthy relationship is built on, like, as corny as it's going to sound, love and, (laughs) and trust and compatibility like not just physical appearance you know do you feel me i really do hope that you work this out and i mean you can submit to the anonymous um link again i'm definitely want to know like how this goes i i need an update we need an update uh but yeah thank you so much for this this question and just being so vulnerable let's move on I went to a haunted house attraction about two years ago. It was fun and it was scary. All until one of the scare actors headbutted me. From my view, it looked intentional because I saw this clown jerk their head back and forward into mine. The real horror came after when my forehead was busted. I had blood drip into my eye and the legal shit that came after never going back to that place ever again. I wonder if this scare actor was having a bad day or maybe just targeting you. (laughs) Okay, oh my gosh. That reminds me of when I went with my dad to Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights. Oh, (laughs) okay. So my dad, you, you can't take him to events like this like it's just not gonna work but the first attraction we went on was the terror tram which i believe the theme was the purge that year so when we got off of the tram you are bombarded by purge scare actors like they they just all come running at you and apparently someone got too close to my dad and stepped on his foot and he very angrily screamed Ow, you stepped on my fucking foot. And I like looked and I was like, Dad, like it was an accident. (laughs) He's like, they stepped on my foot. I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, I mean, they really should like should watch where they're walking. But I mean, accidents do happen. Um, Oh my gosh. Then when we went into the exorcist house, one of the like animatronic things spit water. And he was just, he was so irritated. Uh, But I do want to add, oh my gosh, he was totally unfazed by all of it. He did not jump once at all. What a legend. This submission says, do the do you want us to come over and shoot her 911 call? Um, I need a police officer over here at 7. What's going on? Um, I've got two teenage daughters, and I just got home from work. They were um, physically fighting with each other, and one of them kicked a hole in a door. And um, they're 12 and almost 14, and the 12-year-old is completely out of control. And I I can't, I physically, if she's as big as I am, I can't control her. Okay, did you want us to come over and shoot her? Are you there? Excuse me? Uh, That's a joke. Okay, so Who that, are you? What is your name? Mike Forbes. Okay, that's not funny, Mike. I'm sorry. What, I'm going to file a formal complaint. I don't blame you a bit. Because hey, you know what? 
Uh, this is really not very funny. I know it's not, ma'am. Well, apologize. guess what? It's not going to be very funny when I go in front of your supervisor and tell him. I understand. He can, I guess he can just listen to the tape. Yes, he can. I'm sorry. I apologize. Well, Hold sorry on. doesn't Hold cut on it. I need second. a police officer. Hold on. Okay, so what happened here was the 911 operator named Mike Forbes got into some trouble for making an inappropriate comment when the mom we all heard asked for help with her difficult child. So anyway, after the call, Mike Forbes told his boss right away, the police chief, David Van Lohr, who's in charge, took it seriously. He wrote a letter to Mike Forbes saying, we can't accept this kind of talk. And if it happens again, you'll lose your job. Wow. Next submission. Least favorite collab. Are you really trying to start something right now? Uh, I don't have any, to be completely 110% honest with you. I, I don't have any. I believe each collab I've done for this podcast has benefited the show in some way or another, uh, especially the ones with other creators. I mean, I'm just, I'm still so new to this. And like I've said, I'm extremely shy and sometimes very insecure about my speech issues. So every collab for me is sort of like a training session. I I mean, again, if you're prying to see if any of them have been difficult or rude uh, or trying to get some tea, no, boo. Like, I've I've been really lucky enough to work with some awesome individuals, and I really mean that. Have I come across some not-so-nice people in this whole podcasting world? I have, but I haven't collaborated with any of them, nor will I ever. Like, I've... Yeah, we're not going to get into that. Um, Let's move on. There's another 911 call request. Shall we do it? I think we shall. Police and fire, this is Crystal. How can I help you? Listen here. I'm at Main Street in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Okay, do you know where Main, do you know where Main Street is? I'm not sure if that is a good address, sir. Could you ver- verify that for me? Main Street. Main Street. I'm not sure if that is a, a good address. That is an address. Okay, what's the nearest intersection that you're by? What do you want, the damn phone number? Okay, go ahead and give that to me. 719-393-0078. Mm-hmm. Okay. Zero, zero, okay, is that a home phone? Yes, it is. Okay, sir. And what's going on there? Now, listen here. I've got two people here held hostage, all right? Okay. Now, you know what happens to people that are held hostage. It's not like on the movies or nothing, all right? You understand that? Okay. And uh, one of them here's name is Danielle and her father. And the reason why I'm doing this Mm -hmm. is because her father raped my sister. Okay. Okay. And And I am armed, okay? Okay. I am armed. I do have a pistol, and I swear to God, I I will kill these people. If any cops come in this house with any guns, okay. I will fucking shoot them. I will kill them. Okay. Do you understand me? Can I get your name, sir? Yes, my name is uh, John Defano. Okay, John, are you in security? What do you mean? Are you in the, the town of security? Because I'm not sure that you're in Colorado Springs. You may be right outside of my area. Yes. So you are in security? Yes, I am. Okay, I'm going to need you to need to transfer you over to the sheriff's office. Will you stay on the phone with me? Yes, I will. Okay, hang on just one second. Let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. Can you stick on the line with me at all? Because I'm not talking to these people anymore. Sure, John. I'll I had enough you. of this shit. I'll certainly do that. Okay, hang on. Right, just, but just remember, mm-hmm. I am armed and I will shoot. Okay, what kind of gun do you have? Uh, I have a twenty two. Okay. Is it a pistol? Oh, yes, it is. Okay. And you have two people there? Yes, I do. An 18-year-old and her father. Okay. Okay, I want you to hang on the phone with me. They're duct taped in the next room. They are duct, uh, duct taped and roped together. Okay. Let me okay. get you over to the county, okay? And I'll right. hang on the phone with you, John. All right. Okay. And you are, you're going to be talking. Yes, sir, I will, John. All right. Just one second. Thank you. Let them know I'm transferring it over. You want me to stay on the phone? Jennifer, can I help you? Jennifer, this is Crystal over at the city. I'm transferring a call in. Um, one of my other um, dispatchers is calling over there. It's going to be a hostage situation, Main Street and Security. Okay, yeah. Okay, let me bring him on in the phone. He's wanting me to stay on the line with him. Okay. 
Johnny, you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Okay, I have the county on the phone with us now. Hi, John? Yes, I'm here. Hi, okay, this is Jennifer. Okay, uh, so what exactly is going on? I'm not talking anymore. Okay, you can't talk? I'm not talking anymore. Hey, John, like is... I said, I am armed. John, is it okay if I tell her what's going on? Yes, you may. Okay. All right, County, he advised me that he has two people there that he's holding hostage. Okay. An 18-year-old that is named Danielle and her father. Okay, disclaimer. Are you ready for it? This is fake. It's fake. Because I'm not going to lie. This is actually one of the ones I looked into prior to this recording. And after going down a whole rabbit hole to find a follow-up, I found this one is fake. Apparently, it was a prank call made by a then 15-year-old boy whose name was Matthew Wigman. He was reportedly blind, and he had made a number of fake prank calls. He was arrested at the age of 19 and sentenced to 11 years in prison for admitting he took part in a scheme that hacked phone systems to fake emergency 911 calls that sent teams of heavily armed police to the homes of unsuspecting victims. This is known as swatting. He also pleaded guilty to one count of conspiracy to retaliate against a witness, victim, or informant and one count of conspiracy to commit access device fraud. He admitted that he retaliated against a Verizon investigator who reported his phone-freaking activities to the FBI. Why can't people with skills like this use their abilities for good? Like, why is that so hard? Can we commend the dispatcher, though? She was amazing. And so was the other one that she patched in. Usually they're kind of like questionable, but she was amazing. Let's do one more and wrap up this episode with a little announcement. This question asks, I don't get your podcast name. What? How? Do I really have to explain this again? Anakin, you're breaking my heart. Okay, Scream Queer is a play on Scream Queen. I don't identify as queer. I identify as a gay man because I am. But if you look up the definition for the word queer, its origins call back to something that is either strange or odd, which I love. I, at times, am strange or odd, but I do know that the word now is used as a gender identity or it used to be used as a derogatory term, but I just thought it had a like ring to it. I mean, it is what it is, and that's why it's called Scream Queer Podcast. So before wrapping up, I just want to announce that Scream Queer Podcast will be getting a little spinoff, Scream Queer Podcast ASMR, because I've been getting quite a bit of feedback about my voice and how relaxing it could be. I felt I need to take advantage of this, no? Like, why not? I need to listen to my audience, too. Like, I mean, that's why you all are here because we are like, like, like I said, it's like we're in a relationship. Like you give me what I need. I give you what you need. All is good, you know? So I need to give you what you want. So what exactly can you expect from this new spinoff podcast? Well, I basically will be taking the storytelling aspect from this show and stripping back all of the like jump scares and all of that and replacing them with a more calming but still creepy experience. So yes, there will be whispering, but also there will be like soft-spoken segments. But what I'm really excited to do is a new roleplay experience. Enough of me trying to explain. <laughs> like I'm here like... <laughs> 
But like, I'm not even going to try to explain anymore. So listen for yourself. So without further ado, here's a world premiere. I'm just kidding. It's just a, like a little sneak peek listen of what is to come. In a realm where the shadows hold secrets and the night conceals the unknown, prepare yourself to embark on a spine-tingling journey. Join me, Ralph Anthony, host of the Scream Queer podcast, where we'll descend to the darkest corners of your dreams. Every Thursday night, I'll be your guide through the terrifying and unsettling tales that will haunt your sleep. From the depths of true crime mysteries, spine-tingling encounters with the paranormal, to the chilling realms of horror fiction, whether you seek solace in the eerie embrace of darkness or a thrill to wind down your night, prepare yourself for the scariest slumber of your life. The limited spin-off you've been dying for. Thursday nights will never be the same. Scream Queer Podcast presents a horror true crime ASMR experience. The Nightmare Begins this October. Available wherever you listen to podcasts. How'd I do? Pretty good, eh? You think? Yeah? Maybe? So? If you're listening to this, the new podcast page is live on all streaming platforms. I believe this one's even on Samsung Podcasts and some others. Please go and subscribe if you want and opt in for notifications so you know when an episode has dropped. Again, it'll be available in October, and I just want to reiterate that this is a limited podcast, meaning it can go on for a month, it can go on for a year, it all depends on how well it does. This podcast, Scream Queer Podcast, it will still be the main priority, but like I said, I just wanted to offer something different and do something cool for spooky season because I'm spooky all year long, so I had to really think outside the box here. So let's wrap up. Thank you again for listening in. (laughs) Reflecting on what I just recorded, I kind of come off a little bit bitchy. (laughs) I mean, like I said, I'm always grateful for anything that is sent to me. Questions, comments, stories. Uh, (laughs) It's just some of these troll questions. I'm like, ah, But with all that out of the way, I will scare you all on the next episode.